welcome back everybody uh, when we last left off we were uh, getting a canopy uh, wrapped up um, here I'm just basically cleaning up the squeeze out from between um, you know cleaning up is a whole lot easier when everything's still wet and uh, there's gonna be a second round of uh, a bead that has to go down before uh, this is complete so I'm not wasn't too worried about accidentally um, you know taking off a little bit too much I mean you know I'm just cleaning up the material I just don't want it to be harder to remove later and um so you know go around and get all that uh um i had some a few little issues the the rivets that are still showing there are actually for the uh the rib that's part of the uh, rear fuselage and i needed to spend a little bit i i, I didn't want to quite pull those yet because uh i wanted to make sure everything was lined up correctly um the the skin is riveted straight into the uh the canopy so i mean that that's not going anywhere um but you know just uh, and i was being careful so um i was going to wait until i had the plane pretty much uh tidied up uh to test the avionics and make sure all the stuff in the the like the um uh, uh, I think it's the gad that's in the back uh, to make sure that everything was working correctly there. Um, but after I put the canopy on, I realized, well, I'm the canopy is riveted to the skin. There's no way that I'm going to be able to unfold the skin or open up enough of that skin in order to be able to reach inside and do any meaningful work. Um, so I went ahead and just pulled all the rivets and the, the aft portion of the fuselage. Um, I really, really, really hope that uh, I don't have any uh, issues in that area. Oh, by the way, COM1 works as a great, uh, uh, paper towel holder if you are really careful. So, um, <laughs> I needed to keep something close by, um, and, uh, cause I was, I was needing it for a couple of things and it's like, well, I mean, sure. Um, it's, it's on there really good and, uh, I just had to be careful. So anyway, um, you know, this went together really well. Um, there really wasn't any uh, alignment issues uh, except for just the line that was uh, at the very bottom there. Um, the holes in the rivets were just off enough that, you know, I could force it through, but, you know, eh, I, I just cleaned the hole up a little bit and um, the, the rivets went in straight. Um, you know, there wasn't, I, I wasn't too concerned about it uh, changing anything. And actually, if you can see there, I'm I'm kind of cleaning the skin as I go along before I put the rivet holes in. Because for uh, it's amazing how dusty the airplane gets uh, while it's in the shop. And in later videos, you'll see that I've covered up the uh, the rear portion of the airplane with a, a shipping blanket uh, just to kind of help keep it keep it clean. Um, so, but it's kind of cool. I mean, the, you know, the whole the I would say probably I don't know 90% of my riveting is done at this point in time. Uh, which is good because when I look at my uh, 142 and 153 rivets, uh, that that pile is getting very very small. Um, I'll try to remember to take a picture. Uh, we started a box of uh, the uh, mandrels that we pulled, just to kind of have a fun box uh, of you know how many rivets did you pull, um, and it's a pretty sizable box uh, and it's almost overflowing at this point in time. It weighs probably 20 25 pounds. Um, just of the mandrels so uh, there's quite a bit there anyway uh, so I got all of that done um, the luggage door is uh, officially riveted up as well um, the reason why I had not riveted that final row across the back uh, was because I still needed to put the uh, the cable for the canopy away now I'm building this without a parachute, um, but I am building it with the parachute cables on the canopy pre-installed. So there is that additional um, uh, weight or whatever. Oh, and by the way, this is a huge milestone for me. Uh, I've gotten really tired of looking at the uh, um, the cross braces inside the canopy, and it's really confused everybody because they couldn't figure out where you sat. Um, once the canopy's on, uh, you can go through and remove um, all those cross braces and whatnot, um, because it's, it's pretty well set at this point in time. So I was really looking forward to this, uh, this stage of things. Cause also it makes it easier to get in and do some work. Um, I also, uh, finally put the skin on the, uh, landing gear portion of things. Um, I had to get it off, uh, and just do a quick clean with the, uh, the green, uh, simply green and, uh, then get it back on there. Um, 
I figured that I was going to be under the plane for quite a bit, uh, so I went ahead and bought one of the nice, uh, nice um, uh, dollies there to ride around on. Um, this went on really well, um, no big deal. Um, of course, I realized at the last minute, hey, I should put the camera down there so that you guys can see what I'm working on. But it's, uh, you know, it looks really good. Uh, I'm quite happy about that. Um, so anyway, uh, yep, those those are all done. Um, I also double checked. There was a few extra um, rivet holes that uh, got missed. Um, most of it's just uh, a, a little bit of alignment issues, and so I. Uh, or with the skin, so I just need to pull it in place and get the rivet in there. Um, and that's what I'm taking care of here. Um, just needs a little bit of help in that direction. Um, so, I don't know, nothing nothing like laying down on the job. Anyway, uh, so if you look in the back of the canopy here, you can see the two uh, copper uh, uh, crimps that are on the, the short portion of the, the cables, and then there's a long cable. Uh, oh, and I also needed to torque the landing gear down, so uh, I went ahead and got that done as well. Um, the You can see the, the foam there is just kind of sitting inside, and uh, I'll take care of that here in a minute. But um, this is the first time I've been actually in the airplane on the wheels itself, and um, <laughs> it was just kind of fun. Um, I also cut that board uh, several months ago in, in, with anticipation that I was going to need it um, at some point in time. This is tough. Um, this was a lot harder than I expected to as far as getting that parachute cable in place um, because obviously it needs to be fairly tight. Um, the problem is is that those are heavy gauge cables and the tighter you wind it, the more they want to spring apart. Um, so I had some pretty heavy duty zip ties uh, on hand and uh, as I would make each turn I would uh, zip tie it so that it wouldn't unspring on me. Um, and then uh, once I got it all in place, then it's just a matter of going through and riveting uh, that uh, box or the, the, the pan that kind of keeps it all protected from everything in, in place. Um, the idea is, is if, you know, somebody buys the plane at some point in time uh, in the future, it won't be me, um, and says, hey, you know, I'm going to uh, put a parachute on it. It's uh, just, it, you know, cutting some skin. There's a few extra pieces you have to get from sling. Uh, and uh, you hook up the, the cables and, uh, you know, maybe three or four days worth of work to, to put the parachute in and, and you don't have to worry about running any of the cables. Um, since I had the, um, uh, the, the cross braces out, then I, this just made this job a whole lot easier I, uh, as far as putting the foam in. So I just kind of blasted through that. And, uh, you know, I, I try to be tidy with the, the remnants floating around in the, the, the fuselage but uh, it needs a cleaning every now and then. Um, so this is just, you know, finishing up the last of the rivets that needed to uh, get put in around the, the forward portion of the, the canopy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the only riveting at this point in time that's left is going to be uh, up on the nose with the, um, some of that aspect. Um, so I figured I'd get the seatbelt going because uh, the, the instructions, at least according to the ones that Evan put together for sling, suggested that at this stage you could put the uh, the skin and the sides, and of course before you do that you got to put the seatbelt in. Um, I I was going to put a uh, ballistic or what is the airbag seatbelt in. Um, when I initially looked at it, uh, this is uh, a little over a year ago, and it's uh, uh, first part of 2023. Um, that seatbelt was about 2500 bucks for two of them, and uh, I went to go buy it uh, here to, to install it, and it shot up to $3,500 for two of them. I can always put it in later. Um, it just, to me, was like, man, that's that's a little bit more than I was ready to pre or prepared to, to buy at this point in time. Uh, so, regular seatbelts it is. Um, it is kind of funny, the, the bolt hole that uh, the seat belts go into, uh, up until this point in time, I thought that was the hole that was pre-drilled for the brake lines to go into the back of the uh, fuselage. Yeah, well, it's the bolt hole for the seat belts. Um, so once I figured that out, then it was just a matter of putting you know the seat belts in and then torquing them down. Um, and then here I'm test fitting the, um, uh, the, the side skins. Um, I'm just setting them in place. I mean, this, even the plastic wrap or plastic protector is still on the skin at this point in time. 
Um, but I just kind of wanted to see what I was uh, possibly running into. And it was actually really good because I could see some additional work that I needed to do as far as tidying up um, not just the side skin, but that piece that I just put in there uh, in front of the seat belt. And you'll see me come in and put it in on the other side. Um, yeah, this is it there. That piece right there. Um, try making a hole for it in the foam. Um, <coughs> my father-in-law, um, back when we were doing a bunch of skin cleaning, uh, or, you know, cleaning a material, um, just tore through all of the, um, uh, wrapping and removed the identifier off of that. So I had no idea where it went. Um, and then I was watching a video that Evan had and I'm like, there's where it goes. So I got that in place and, uh, we're all good to go. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, if you have any questions, obviously do the, do the thing you do, just reach out and I'll be happy to help. Talk to you soon. Bye.